Hi, my name is Stefania and I'm a master's student at the School of Physical and Occupational Therapy at McGill University. I'm excited to share with you my project. The title of my project was Combining a Tailored Strength Training Program with Transcranial Direct Current Stimulation, also known as TDCS, to improve upper extremity function in chronic stroke patients. The objectives of my project were to determine whether the use of TMS-induced MEPs to stratify patients will help optimize strength training of the affected arm and to estimate the extent to which a four-week tailored strength training program with TDCS can further enhance motor recovery and boost the function of the affected arm when compared to sham TDCS. This was a stratified double-blinded randomized trial. At the end, we had 80 chronic stroke patients from three different sites, including Montreal, Sherbrooke, and Ottawa. The whole project for each patient lasted about six weeks. So we had two pre-training evaluations, 12 strength training sessions, which ran through four weeks, and two post-training evaluations. This is the study design from assessment to post-training assessment. The summary diagram, inclusion and exclusion criteria. Moving on to the outcomes, the table presents uh, the dependent and independent variables that were used in my project. For the clinical evaluation, which was done pre and post-training, we used Fulgemeyer, range of motion for shoulder and elbow flexion and wrist extension and motor activity log. The neurophysiological evaluation, which was also done pre and post training, was an assessment with TMS for assessing the excitability of cortical spinal tract and the cortical reorganization pre and post intervention. This was done using EMG electrodes over the affected FDI muscle. These were the details for the TMS used. For the resting motor threshold, we needed at least four out of second consecutive trials present, and we used TMS for 10 trials at 110 and 130% of the resting motor threshold over the affected hemisphere. Motor work potentials are used to measure cortical spinal excitability from the motor cortex. Uh, we look at the size, which is basically the amplitude of the MEPs, which is related to the number of activated neurons. After finding the amplitude of the TMS-induced MEPs, we had three levels of stratification. After the first stratification, we then stratified patients into three strength training intensities according to the amplitude of their MEPs. So no detectable MEPs would mean that they go into the low training intensity group, whereas clearly detectable MEPs which means over 120 mic microvolts, was at the high training intensity, which could reach up to 80% of their one repetition maximum. The training was for four weeks, three sessions per week, non-consecutive, 60 minutes per session. We used free weights for the wrist extensors and elbow and shoulder flexors, and then dynamometer for the grip muscles. During training, we also had TDCS, which was an anodal montage applied of the ipsilational hemisphere. So we had the anode electrode on the motor cortex area and the cathodal one on the contralateral supraorbital region. We had also another certification. So we divided patients into real and sham TDCS randomly. Um, and the ones who received real TDCS had 20 minutes duration of TDCS applied to them during the training session. In addition, we also used the Borg rating of perceived excursion scale. This controlled basically the equal training between three the three different training groups. So basically, we were looking for a maximum effort for all three training groups between 66 and 80%. Moving on to the results, it was interesting to find that for full Gamaya motor log activity and range of motion, after training, they all increased significantly with better outcomes seen in the low and moderate training group. This could be due to the fact that probably the high training group already had high scores, so there wasn't much room for uh, improvement. Another interesting note is that 
we did not find any significant add-on effect of TDCS in terms of motor function. Overall, the significance of this proposed work shows that tailoring exercises based on each stroke survivor's functional potential is very important to enhance treatment gains. Therapists could ultimately benefit from updated and affected therapies. We could lower the cost of post-stroke rehabilitation and at the end of the day, provide stroke survivors with a better quality of life and maximize their well-being. Thank you.